Hello everyone, I am the Duke of Bacons, here to deliver to you my first Let's Play of Democracy 3. Let us begin. Now in Democracy 3, uh, we have a political simulator here. Turn-based political simulator, where we can choose between these various countries. Uh, the most difficult of which I believe is the United States, due to its size, you see. Uh, the population of these countries, uh, it affects the way that you can change things, how quickly you can change situations is dependent upon how loyal the population and your various ministers are to you. So, uh, yeah, they have random facts here, like beef consumption. I think that has something to do with OBC, maybe. Ah, America's fat. That's really funny on the developer's part. Uh, but, uh, like croissant consumption for the French, uh, beer consumption for the, the Germans, and so on and so forth. So I think, uh, first thing that we're going to try to do, we're going to pick a medium-sized country, so maybe we should try, say, actually, let's just go, let's go for it, USA, why not? USA, USA, and so on. Begin. Okay, so, Democratic Conservatives. No, we're gonna wanna be pretty social democrat, in my opinion, so... Uh, how about the, uh, hmm... Can we even be socialists? The Socialist Coalition, yes. I like it. And our opponents are, like, the Jehovah Party or something. Yeah, let's go with the Jehovah's. Okay, so it's the Socialist versus the, like, the Jehovah Witnesses. Oh my gosh. So we're gonna have four year terms, or two terms, like the presidency in America. Let's begin. Now in democracy, sometimes you're tempted to make large changes at once, but what I find is that uh, a series of smaller changes can affect large results. Much like in real life, a little 2% tax there, or a 5% increase in pay there can really change the big picture. When you take a step back. <sighs> so, let's do this. Congratulations on your election victory. Welcome to your new job as president. The lives of 316,668,000 citizens are now in your hands. As you will imagine, there are a number of situations and concerns that you will need to deal with as soon as possible. GDP is not looking good. Unemployment, yeah, not good. Crime, not good. Health, not good. Education, better than expected. Poverty. Uh, reasonably low. I mean, you don't want a high poverty. So. Oh, jeez. So we have antisocial behavior, drug addiction, uh, asthma pe epidemic. So. First of all, let's work on this deficit. We have a $27 billion deficit. So we can go to our expenditures here and see what we're spending our most on. $233 billion is going to military. So what we could do drop military spending. Now, uh, that's step here. The lower we need 19 political capital. How much do we have? We have 26. Good, good, good. So, let's just lower this. We're at 233 billion right now. We are running at 27 billion dollar deficit, so we could tr probably drop this. Let's save about 100 billion. Why not? Light, defensive, well-trained. Yeah. Wow, that you can see the various effects it will have here. Uh, Patriots won't like us. Unemployment uh, will go up as we lay off military personnel. State employees will go down. State employee membership will go down. State employees will like us less. That's what this is. Uh, state employee income will go down. And the liberals will like us a lot more. So, apply these changes. See, these are the various social groups in our nation. Now, sometimes individuals will be shared between these groups. So a liberal can also be religious and patriotic and a motorist and so on and so forth. So liberals are 36% of the population. Uh, the religious, I already, I'm already going to say that religious are going to be my prime enemies and probably the patriots as well. And there's a lot of them, so I may not be reelected. But let's see what we can get done in this short four years that we've been allotted by the voting populace. Okay, we have seven political capital left. Let's see, uh, let's look at our cap. Here. Uh, for some reason. Uh, 
I can't see their pictures, but normally there would be a picture up here. See, uh, they have various loyalties and sympathies. So if you piss off the people they're sympathetic with, they won't like you very much anymore. So, uh, we have... So, Stephen Powell is sympathetic to the motors and socialists, religious and, <laughs> the religious and the conservatives. Uh, that's not going to go well. Uh, commuter socialist, commuter motorist, commuter liberal, socialist liberal, motorist socialist. Uh, the only person I see having trouble here is this guy. So, uh, he's a welfare minister. Let's fire him. Let's hire a new welfare minister that is liked by people that we we like, uh, sympathetic with people that we expect to be uh, on our side. So, socialists and trade unionists. Uh, and what does he want? Does he want welfare? Nope. Okay, desired jobs. Th if you pick a desired job, you don't have to, but if you do, it, it increases the amount of political capital they can get you. Um, so welfare, trade unionist, motorist, welfare, liberal parents. Welfare, motorist, liberal, welfare, motorist, socialist. Uh, an experience that will also affect its commuter ethnic minority. Let's do that, yeah. Minorities should like it. Socialists, after all. Next. I don't mean that in a racist way. It's just we're not uh, the religious conservatives that tend to uh, be hard on minorities. A debt protection law here. So debt collection agencies have been in the news because of the aggressive methods they are using to extract payment from people who owe large sums of money. These debt collection agencies provide credit to people whom larger, more respectable companies will not lend money. A law is proposed to limit the ways in which such agencies can operate. Okay, so this is like payday loans, things of that nature, where people try to screw over each other with um, high interest rate loans to people who can't pay them back. So, <clears throat> yeah, let's limit these agencies to activity. Why not? Good news, the global economy is doing well. Popular among the citizens. See, we, got, we only get 16% of the vote if we went now. Uh... Okay, our cabinet ministers are loyal. Uh, continue. Okay, so let's try... What's the biggest problem? Popular. Uh, everyone. Let's see, why do they hate us? Crime, internet crime, minister sacked. Okay, so... Let's work on crime, shall we? Uh, police force? We could probably stand to increase that. Uh, we also have a... a technological advantage. Educate labor laws. Uh, raise a lot of stuff. Private, schools, uh, private health care. Technology colleges. Science funding. Science funding is usually a pretty cheap way to boost everything, so it's always a good idea to raise that. Pretty non controversial as well. What is this abortion law? Okay, well, that's really controversial. Uh, so, state schools we can raise this, but not right now. How about police force? Yeah, you can put a lot of police on the streets. Yeah, let's go. Police force. Increase that a bit. Uh, vigilante mobs. Okay, a lot of this is going to be solved. Internet crime, so... Intelligence services, uh, let's increase their pay as well. That's the environment. Okay, asthma epidemic, we can solve that with environmentalist policies. We'll get around to that later. Okay, so GDP's going up, I think. Budget report, we're a triple B credit rating. Let's reject the ban. Uh, yeah, it's just a TV ban, so I don't see how it would help at all. And it just limits the freedom of the press and, and whatnot, so... I love my freedom. We're not going to do that. Okay, so... What is this? School vouchers. A measure designed to encourage the growth of private schools. Let's cancel this policy. 
We're earning a $33 billion surplus right now. That's good, and we'll, it'll be $50 billion when that voucher program kicks in, when we cancel that voucher program. Basically, we want to reduce private schooling and increase state schooling. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's private schools, they let us educate our kids without putting burden on the state, but they also have various ethical issues with, uh, like, indoctrinating children and whatnot, which I suppose the state can do as well, but at least the state isn't going to be, like, overly religious or whatnot. So narcotics, uh, what do we have here? Alcohol abuse. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what to do about alcohol abuse. Consumption is helping it a lot. How do we reduce consumption? Uh, we can reduce unemployment and poverty. Uh, the only real way to reduce unemployment I've found is just to uh, increase GDP, get those private sector jobs. So what's hurting our GDP the most? Crime, skill shortage, on education. So we need more education. Wait, hold on. Skill shortage, immigration. There's a number of people entering this country, both legally and illegally, making this their new home. It's being caused by a strong economy, as those living in poor countries are difficult to hire them. Immigration can be reduced by border control. Citizens who test too much immigration too fast can lead to racial tension. So, so, I mean, we can increase border controls. That would be controversial. Or we can go into this tab and implement new ideas. Um... You know, welfare fraud department, populated voters. Uh, how about that? Welfare fraud. Is homelessness a problem? I don't think so. It is. So we may want to go in here. Go to rent controls. This is an alternative to state housing, where basically you can regulate the private rental market to get a sort of supply of affordable housing for everyone. That'll reduce homelessness. Uh, and it's not very expensive. But that's good. <laughs> Superhero? Oh, God. So this is a sign that our citizens are turning to masked adventurers to save themselves because the government can not defend them anymore. Uh, one sec. Okay, um, so, yeah, they want to play Victoria in a bit. I'll finish this up first. So, it's like we're gaining popularity with the liberals, conservatives, and state employees. We're losing it with the capitalists. There's a lot of capitalists in America, so. But there's actually more socialists, which is interesting. Uh, so, poverty. Labor laws, I mean... Yeah, let's, let's go from a pro-employer to a pro-union policy. Now this will take uh, two turns to uh, implement, which two quarters, I mean, quarter being, uh, what, three months? So, yeah. Next turn, we'll work on education next. Unemployment's going up. Crime's going down. Vigilante mobs are gone. Public smoking ban. Ban public smoking. Leave launching. Yeah, it's banned public smoking. Secondhand smoke is a big problem. We have enough problems with asthma epidemics and whatnot. Okay, so... We don't have uh, political capital. I pissed off some guys. Loyalty. Socialists and liberals. Computers. Let's do something that computers have. Yeah, we can do uh, 
basically rail subsidies, I think. But, uh, you know, uh, public school subsidies. Yeah, let's do the uh, school bus subsidies. And the uh, rail subsidies. Wow, that's going to be a lot of money. Like 40 to 67 million surplus. So let's just increase this by like 20. Small changes, remember. Don't want to change too much too quickly. Disrupt the balance of things. Next. Crime going down, health going up. Unemployment still bad. Uh, Antisocial behavior is at an end. Uh, say we can appoint a new ambassador now. It's well known for a patriot, uh, but appoints the Wil Sean Wilson, who is a popular at the international stage. We'll do that. Triple B credit rating still. Even though we're running a surplus, which I think should mean that we uh, could up our credit rating if we wanted to. But yeah, we definitely need to work on education. Where's education? Right here. Dates. 95 billion. Raise is already 230 billion. Can you imagine? Uh, that's. Okay, I think we have like a 50 billion surplus right now. 53 billion. But we have to remember GDP will rise if we increase state schooling. So let's increase this to. Uh, I mean, we could increase it by like. Billion. It's going to put us $10 billion deficit, but it should help us over the long term. The GDP. Any good ideas? Well, for a fraud department, yeah, it's a good idea. Could save us a lot. Cost $3.8 billion in income, maybe $400 million or so. And the income increases with the uh, the more welfare you have, the more income you'll get back from this, so it eventually can become profitable. That's going to make people happier with this. Middle, middle income and conservative, there should be a lot of that. Yeah, middle income is 52% of the population, conservative is 56%. Uh, let's do the So nothing's really changed up here. Uh, yeah. Made the commuters and the liberals mad, apparently. So an economy takes off. Yes. Our economy is one of the most internet and technology-centered economies in the world. Yes, 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 yes. That's good. Help our GDP. $34 billion surplus, despite the fact that I increased spending schooling. So. So we need to make the commuters happy. How do we do that? Um. We do bus lanes, bus subsidies, uh, free bus passes, national monorail system, co telecommunicating initiative. Yes, this is good. It's cheap. It reduces uh, congestion, park usage, things of that nature. So, what's another thing we could do to make commuters happy? Bus subsidies, bus lanes, bus lanes. Oh, it could be an expensive option though, and some motor scooters in this turn. Uh, how about... Hmm... Fuel efficiency standards as well. Car usage goes up. Oil demand and CO2 emissions goes down. It's going to help our asthma. Okay, uh, community policing, working with the community rather than having control of community policing encourages the police to better understand the needs of the local community, especially in areas with ethnic minorities. Critics see as an expensive way of money, which can be spent on more dirty methods to cut crime. Implement this. Uh, alcohol abuse. Oh, that's going to drive alcohol abuse way down. Hell yeah. That's right. I think I remember that from a previous playthrough of this game, so. Yeah. Liberalism goes up, liberals like me more, crime goes down. It's all around a good thing. So. 
How much is it though? It's just 10 billion. We need to change it later, we will. Okay, so crime's going down, education's going up, poverty's gone down as well. GM, allow GM crops, basically. I don't think I don't see anything wrong with GM crop usage as long as it's regulated and whatnot. Socialists and liberals. So what can I do to make the liberals the socialists like me more? It's probably the liberals that I don't that I don't like. Armed police, death penalty, intelligence services. Prisoner tagging. Oh my god. We do so much like screwed up stuff in the United States. Like what? How does that even Prisoner tagging, where is that? Why are we tagging people? Don't need that. But let's get rid of arm police. Okay. Allowing only specialist police officers. Alright, and we'll see you next time.